Hello everyone, and welcome into our Friday edition of the 5 Star News. And Isaac, we are stacked today with some really good stories about the cool things going down here at the Taj. Yes, we are, and we'll start you off with some cool announcements with Bernie Morrison and my partner here, Kieran Freed. Thank you. Welcome back to What's Up Heritage. Now let's get on to your Friday announcements. Our Heritage football team will be at home tonight against Southeast Whitfield for a game. Kickoff is at 7.30, so be sure to come out and support your generals. Oh yeah, and more on this is coming in sports, so stay tuned. Also, the homecoming dance will be happening tomorrow from 7 to 11 p.m. Tickets are $10 per person, so come out if you can. And finally, our homecoming pep rally will be happening today at 2.30 out at the Jeff Sims Field. So be sure to show off your homecoming spirit. Now let's get on to the weather with our weatherman, Brody Morrison. Thanks, Kieran. And now, let's go on to your weekend weather forecast. For Friday, we'll have sunny skies with a high of 85 and a low of 61. For Saturday, we'll have mostly sunny skies with a high of 87 and a low of 60. For Sunday, we'll have mostly sunny skies with a high of 85 and a low of 61. And for Monday, we'll have more sunny skies with a high of 85 and a low of 59. So get out and enjoy that nice football weather this weekend. Now, Let's get back to our anchors for more news. Thanks, guys. And on to the news, and I have some great news to share today about our one impressive junior, Natalie Ferry. Yep, Natalie was appointed to the state of Georgia's Superintendent Student Advisory Council. That's huge, and a first for a student at HHS. We talked to the principal, Bradford, and Natalie earlier this week about this honor. Here's Five Star News reporters Owen Bryant with the report. Well, Natalie uh, applied and was selected to the state superintendent's student advisory council. I think there were 17,000 students from across the state that applied. She was one of 69 that was chosen, the only one from Catoosa County. Um, so I think that shows what an awesome young lady she is. But what she'll get to do is uh, they'll have several meetings during the school year. I know the first one's in Atlanta at the Department of Education, which is right downtown Atlanta across from uh, the state capitol. So they'll have meetings, ask their opinions. I am one of three, around three students from Northwest Georgia who is chosen. So for the school, I hope to represent and bring a lot of qualities that we want to see um, in the state legislature and in the state um, policy wise. Um, I have the experience and the knowledge of what is working and isn't working here. And hopefully I can bring that um, ideals that Heritage holds to the statewide. Um, school systems. So they'll be advising the state superintendent about things that work, things that don't work, things that we should be doing. Um, so I think it's a, a pretty pretty neat opportunity for her and uh, a great way for her to have influence on education in the state of Georgia. Congrats Natalie and good luck in that role. Yep, keep making us proud. And on to our annual FCA See at the Poll event that took place on Wednesday morning bright and early at 7.15. Did you get a chance to attend the Dyke? Yes, I actually did. And it's always a great event. Being able to praise and worship with your classmates and teachers is always special. Well, our cameras were there and rolling as well. Here's Five Star News reporters David Butler, Parker Scott, and Gabe Guffey with a look back. This is my confidence. You never fail me uh, the CU at the Pole is actually a celebration of the Global Student Day of Prayer. Uh, and this is our gathering for that. Uh, it serves as our FCA meeting this week. Uh, and the middle schools having theirs tomorrow at 715. So anybody wants to uh, yeah, go join them would be great. Um, we just come together as a group of students um, and teachers that help out that uh, we're just praying for anything from our entire world, our country, our state, um, our city, our town here, our heritage community that is great to support this school, um, and even our families and friends. Um, so we just all meet around the flagpole on the first Wednesday of, yeah. no, the last Wednesday of September, yeah. and um, we just pray for our community and school, and it's just really cool to get together and be with yeah. a community of believers. Uh, but it was a great event. Mr. Wynn and the Winnettes uh, did a great job with the live music. Uh, appreciate all the help from Ms., uh, uh, our FCA leaders, uh, Ms. Shulin, Ms. Spradlin, Ms. Hamilton, all big helps. Being able to pray with our school and know that there's more, there's more than you actually know who actually believe, it's just really touching and actually makes me feel good that I'm not alone. 
uh, thankful for a great event this morning and starting off our day in prayer to God. Pray that everybody will learn something from this, Lord, and that we will make prayer a necessity every day, Lord. I pray that we will bless this food, let us nourish our bodies, Lord, and make sure that we're leaders in the school, Lord. Love you. All right, just name I pray. Amen. Definitely an awesome time. And speaking of awesome times, the Skills Your Safe Cornhole Tournament went down last night down at the tennis courts. Around 15 teams competed for the prestigious title. Yep, and it was good to see some former Heritage teachers and alumni as well as some of some current staffers and students slinging bags. Who was the last team standing? Well, let's find out. Here's our very own Coach Green with a look back at the tourney. The tournament's gone great. The weather's been perfect. Everybody's having a pretty good time. Oh, the competition is always real good out here. Everybody seems like they practice, or I've even heard a few people say they have a league on Thursday night. You can really tell by the way they play. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great tournament every year. Uh, this year was it felt more like a homecoming for me coming back here. Uh, it's great to see some people, and uh, competition was good again. It uh, wasn't quite as big a field as we've had in the past, but it was still a good tournament, and uh, had a lot of fun. I think the competition makes this tournament the most fun because it's not just like playing with your typical backyard family members. You get to play against good Cornell players that play it year round. We use the money that we raise to help pay for our competitions. We go to Atlanta in the spring um, and any bit we, we, we can make helps uh, pay for those students, kind of cuts their cost, cuts our cost, and it's, it's just a good thing. We did. We had a few tough matches that went uh, Went right down to the wire. We were fortunate enough to, to hit some, some shots when we needed to and uh, came up with the win with TJ Baggers twice. Uh, had a couple other teams that pushed us right there to the brink. So yeah, it was a good tournament and uh, glad we came out on top. Feels good to get the win again after not being here since last year. We had a good competition, good people to play against, and a lot of our games went down to the wire, especially the last one. We shared a little bit. I, I got some shots to go down earlier, and then Cooper got hot here at the end. He always comes up clutch. Uh, so these last two rounds, he really carried us through as he normally does. He's been carrying me for years now. So, um, yeah, he really threw it well. It feels good. The uh, beginning of the day, I wasn't hot, and my dad carried me. And then the last game, I was on fire. Pretty much every shot did what I wanted it to do, and uh, the results proved it. Congrats all, and thanks to all the Skills USA guys and gals for printing this on every single year. Now, generals, if you're looking for a job, this next segment is just for you. Yep, we here at the show have you covered in that area as well we call this one General Jobs, and it features our work-based learning instructor, Officer Crane. What's available this week? Let's Find see. Out. Yeah, so we got uh, three employers today that have contacted me looking for help. Uh, Raphael's Pizza and uh, Ringgold is one. Uh, Marco's Pizza in Eastridge and Dalton is another, and Freddy's Fast Food uh, in Fort Oglethorpe. All three of those are hiring right now. I think Freddy's is probably paying the best as far as money goes. Um, but also all of your retail establishments, they're starting to hire for seasonal employment. So uh, Marshall's and uh, Walmart, of course, uh, Hobby Lobby, any of your larger retailers right now are going to be uh, – uh, adding people for the Christmas season. So if you're looking at something just seasonal, you just want to work, get some money for the holidays, then now's time to go ahead and get out and apply because they're ramping up their hiring uh, as well. So thanks. Three pretty good options right there. But now it's time to take a break, Isaac. I can definitely agree on that. So let's hear more about Squatober. But after the break, Skylar and Bryce will be here for sports. They'll preview the football game tonight and tell you about our remarkable performance by softball pitcher Addie Edwards. Stick and stay. Sports, sports is, is next. next. What's that I smell in the air? It's Squatober! It's that time again, folks. Squatober at Heritage High School. T-shirts and hoodies will be on sale in the main weight room. T-shirts are $20 and hoodies are $35. If you guys are interested, come on by and see Coach Gibson. Uh, we'll start our Squattober workouts the month of October uh, and be able to celebrate that through the wearing of the T-shirts and the hoodies. Love to have you guys take part of that. Hello again, Generals, sports fans. It's me and Bryce here for you again today, and we have three brand new segments lined up and ready to roll today, Bryce. Yes, we do. And the first one is the big football game later tonight at Jeff Sims Field as our Generals host the Southeast Whitfield Raiders. 
Coach Slaughter's boys will be trying to get back in the win column after a tough out-of-state loss to Bradley County last week. What will it take to knock off the Raiders? Here's five-star sports reporters Logan Beasley, Nolan Kaler with the game preview. I'm here with Coach Hot. And what do we? What do you think we have to do to prepare for uh, Friday night? Uh, well, the most difficult thing with Southeast is they're an option football team, so uh, it's really just a bunch of responsibilities. Uh, there's 11 guys on defense. Everybody has one job, and just uh, cohesively doing that job every single play usually leads to success when you're playing against option teams. Uh, offensively, uh, they have a bunch of looks in the secondary uh, that are good for us. So I think the game plan is to throw the football a lot. How do you think the outcome is going to be on Friday night? Heritage wins. Thank you. I'm here with Brady Chandler. Brady, what have you been doing to prepare for the Southeast game? Um, just watching film, really focusing in practice, and uh, yeah. How do you think the game's going to turn out Friday night? Uh, I think we're going to take a big dub. I think Evan Wingrove might have two touchdowns. I don't know. Just how he's feeling, honestly, if he gets open. Uh, the ball will be thrown him. Um, yeah, no, I think it's going to be a great great win for us, hopefully. Um, shouldn't shouldn't be anything too crazy that we have to deal with. I uh, feel really good going into Friday. Thank you. Uh, do you think Coach New's got a really good uh, game plan for this wing tee offense that the Raiders are running? Yeah, the Raiders are a very weird offense. So it's a little wing tee with some spread sort of type deal. So, um yeah, I feel like we have a decent game plan for it. I mean, I feel like it's uh, going to come along very good, Evan. What do you think the outcome of the game is going to be Friday night? So the outcome's just going to be – the outcome's on us. So whatever we want it to be, that's what it's going to be. So the team effort is going to be good. So if we have a good team effort, um, we could win 90 nothing. If we don't play good, we could lose 90 nothing. So um, – I, 74 to 10. Thank you. Good luck tonight, guys and students. Don't forget to get there a little early tonight so you won't miss the homecoming festivities. On to softball now, and our ladies have been crushing through region play this, these past few weeks. Yep, and those wins are coming from the timely hitting outstanding defense and pitching that's been off the charts. And Tuesday's win over Cedartown Lady Dogs featured all of those elements and then some... Here's five-star sports reporter Owen Bryant, Talon Pickett, Bree Wilson, and Gage Brewer with the report. And the one-two. Got a swing, strike three, and that is it. That is the ball game in a perfect game, no hitter, through five for Addie Edwards. The game against Cedartown, we got another region win, uh, eight to nothing in five innings. Um, Addie Edwards had a perfect game with 14 strikeouts, striking out 14 batters of 15 batters. So that's a really amazing stat. Um, kudos to her. I pitched really well. The offense is really, really good hitting so we could end the game early, which made me get a perfect game even quicker. Yesterday we played good. Addie had 14 strikeouts, which helped us a lot on defense. We played really well. Proud of Addie. She pitched a perfect game. Uh, Addie's had two perfect games this season. It's just a great uh, testament to her work ethic and how hard she works at um, pitching. Um, and then, you know, our girls backing her up on defense too, making plays behind her. Part of our offense, um, we hit really well. Even if we had a pop-up, we still scored the runner. So we all just contributed to the win. So proud of everybody. Uh, Macy had a uh, home run, opposite field home run. Everyone hit well on the team. I had a home run, which helped. Um, it was just a great team win. We uh, were awesome at situational hitting, which we've been working on. So it was great to see them execute it in the game. Congratulations, you softballers, and what an unbelievable performance, Addy. On to volleyball now, and the Generals were in region play earlier this week, taking on Cedartown and Northwest Whitfield. Definitely two matches that our ladies were supposed to win. Could they get it done? Here's me and Skyler to tell you if they could pull off the two wins. So Tuesday we played at Northwest for two more region matches. We played Southeast and Northwest. They went pretty well. I think that there's a lot of things that we can improve on. 
Um, after last night, we have only one more region match next Tuesday against Sonoraville. So our two region wins last night put us at 9-0 and in the region. Um, it's just kind of one step closer to our goals of winning region, but we still have our region tournament coming up over fall break. So we still have a lot of work to do. It's always good to get that confidence in winning some of those games, but definitely still have some work to do in order to achieve our final goal of winning the region. I think that there's a lot of things that we can improve on so that we can compete in state. But other than that, it was fun, and we had a good time. Thanks for sports, you two. And now let's get into some entertainment with a mix of sports. Well, it is Friday, and tomorrow is college football. So, yep, it's time for our fourth edition of College Football Corner with Nature Ball. I hear some of our contestants last week had perfect weeks picking games. Well, it's about time. What games are we featuring this week? Let's find out. Back to another episode of College Football Corner. Your host yet again, Nathan Trowball. Now, the game we're going over today is Arkansas versus LSU. Now, Arkansas put up a fantastic game against LSU, tying in the second quarter, going both getting 10 points in the second quarter, then edging out in the fourth quarter, 15 to 10. However, it was barely not enough as LSU was able to barely pull out a win over the Razorbacks. But for our predictions, this week we have Georgia versus Auburn, South Carolina versus Tennessee, and LSU versus Mississippi. So let's send that off to our experts. Georgia and Auburn. I'm a Georgia fan, so I'm going to go with Georgia. So the Georgia and Auburn game, I think Georgia's going to blow out Auburn. I think Georgia is going to win. Uh, so we got Georgia and Auburn. Georgia's going to take care of business. I'm going to say Georgia wins by three touchdowns. Carolina and Tennessee. I'm not really a Tennessee fan, but I think Tennessee will win this one. The South Carolina-Tennessee game is going to be a good game, but I think Tennessee can pull through. I think Tennessee's going to take the dub. We got South Carolina-Tennessee. Tennessee's going to take care of business. They're not going to look as bad as they did against Florida. LSU versus Mississippi. This is one of these toss-ups. LSU. LSU-Ole Miss game is going to be a good game, but I think Ole Miss will be LSU. LSU's going to win. Last but not least, we have LSU and Ole Miss. And I'm going to go with Ole Miss picking up the upset. That's all for this week. See you next week on the next episode of College Football Corner. I'm Nate Troba signing off. Thanks, Nate, and good luck this week to all the pickers. Now on to general geography. Last week, the guys showed us part one of our segments on flags. Yep, and most everyone did a good job identifying the countries. How will part two go? Here's Kai, Lily, Austin, and Michelle with general geography. All right, I'm here with... Damien Grayson. All right, how well do you think you know your flags? Not well. All right. Let's see how well you do. What is this country? That is Canada. Nice. All right. What, what gave it away? The leaf. Yeah. The, the maple leaf definitely gave it away. Canada. All right. Yep. Just some easy flags to start off with, right? Um, next one? Japan. Mm-hmm. Anime land. Next one up? Germany. I want to say Mexico. I don't know, those, little, those light colors like yellow are really giving away that I feel like it's Mexico. It is actually the country of Germany. Here's your next flag. I don't think I've seen this flag before. Maybe I have. Um, I want to say <laughs> Africa. Bruh. That was a horrible guess. Yeah, Africa's a continent. Next one up. Spain. Yep, that is correct. Yeah, Russia's, Russia isn't it. Th this flag is actually the country of Sweden. Yeah, the the um the yellow and blue remind you of IKEA. Yeah. And with that, we'll say goodbye to this Friday edition of the show. Yep, but we'll be back on Tuesday with a brand new report.
But until then, have, have a great, great weekend, weekend and stay classy, classy heritage. heritage.